Vicks presents the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory. Vicks, the makers of Vicks Vapor Rub, Vicks Vatronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, brings you the Matinee Theater. Starring Victor Jory and featuring Gertrude Warner. Of the plays which we mentioned last week, your overwhelming choice was for Night Bus, which we will bring you next Sunday. But today, in response to your insistent and continued requests, we give a command performance. The memorable story of romance and high adventure based on Alfred Noy's famous poem, The Highwayman. You know... More and more millions of people are using Vicks Vatronol nose drops to relieve distress of head colds. Benefit by their experience. And now our curtain rises on the forests of the England of long ago. Today we ride these forests by the side of one of the most dashing figures of legend, with Victor Jory as the highwayman. The wind was a torrent of darkness among the gusty trees. The moon was a ghostly galleon tossed upon cloudy seas. The road was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor. And the highwayman came riding, riding, riding. Stop the carriage! Stop the carriage! Oh, oh, steady there, steady. All right, coachman, down from the box. Open the carriage. All right, all right. Yeah, now, what is all this, coachman? Looks like a robbery, sir. Sorry to put you out, sir, but I'll have your purse if you don't mind. I'll be hanged if I'll give it to you. You'll assuredly be hanged if you don't. What is it, sir, Guy? Stay in the carriage, Bess. Good evening, Mr. Highwoman. How goes the night? Profitably? Well, you're a spirited girl, aren't you? I'm not afraid of you, if that's what you mean. You see, I'm of a poor family. There's nothing you'd steal from me. Oh, aren't you being rather foolhardy dismounting? A highwayman is always safer in his saddle. Yes, get in the carriage. Don't stand here bandying words with this fellow. Your father will be worried to death, wondering why the coach is late. Here, highwayman, take my purse and let us go. A heavy purse, too. It's enough to buy your freedom. And mine? For yours. I'll take a kiss if you'll give it to me. She'll see you hanged first. You're a highwayman. Aren't you accustomed to taking what you want? I have that reputation. But I'd like to be something... A little more than a highwayman to you. How strange to have a man make love to you with a gun in each hand and a bag of plunder on his shoulder and speak of asking. But since I am asking. Since you are asking. Of course you must have the kiss. was a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor. The highwayman came riding, riding, riding. The highwayman came riding up to the old inn door. <laughs> a tankard of ale, landlord, for everyone, the best in the house. Right you are, Sir John. <coughs> Hello, Tom. You're happy tonight, John. Yes. I take it the hunting was good? The hunting was very good. There's a fortune in my saddlebags that'll be on its way to Ireland tomorrow to fill a lot of empty Irish stomachs. Be careful. Those men at the corner table are watching. Who cares? No one has ever seen the North Road highwayman except in mask and hat. Who's going to link him with a slightly tipsy, a very happy courtier? You never know who it is, and that's the danger. But someday someone will. And then what? Then, let's drink to it. The end. I give you my word, landlord. The impudent fellow kissed your daughter. Not only did he steal my purse, but he kissed your daughter. Well, now, Sir Guy, what's a kiss? Look here, I hope to make that young lady my wife someday. And I can't have her running around kissing every Tom, Dick, and Highwayman in the country. 
And will you please ask her to hurry and dress? We should be late for Lady Catherine's ball, and I despise being late. I'll see what I can do, Sir Guy, but she's quite a costume to get into. Aren't you wearing a costume? Oh, I haven't any taste for such folderol. Ah, I'll wear a mask, and that's the positive limit I'll go to. Well, hurry her along, Tim, hurry her along. All right, all right, all right. That guy's in a fierce mood. They all fuddy daddy. <laughs> I know. He's very angry with me because I kissed the high woman. What ever possessed you to do a thing like that? I don't know. Isn't that funny, Father? Except that even though he wore a mask, even though I knew he was a bandit, he was someone I recognized. Hey? When I saw him, I thought, why, of course... When I used to sit by the window watching the empty road in the moonlight, it was he I was watching for. And when I used to dream of someone's lips and someone's arms, it was his lips and his arms. I know it sounds foolish, but it's true. That's why I kissed him. And if he'd said, come with me, I think I would have gone. It's a bad business being in love with a highwayman. The best you can get out of it is the worst you can get out of anything. They all come to the same end sooner or later, you know. Best girl, Sir Guy is well off. He can give you a fine home and a lot of beautiful things you've never had. Not many girls in your position in life have the opportunity to marry so well. I know, Father, but those aren't the things I want. Sir Guy would suffocate me. I want my life to be the way it was tonight. Exciting and beautiful and challenging. But tonight you were flirting with death. There's no man in England more dangerous to love than a highwayman, daughter. And no man in England more exciting. I hope you never see him again. I pray God you never see him again. In fact, I forbid you to see him again. Tim! Tim! Where's that girl, Tim? <laughs> Fussy old goat. How do I look, Father? For the first time since you were born... I wish you weren't so beautiful. For the first time, I'm glad I am. You'll never see him again if I can help it. You'll never see him again. <laughs> Come on, darling. Kirk, up, my dear. We're going to be late. You know I despise being late. Yes, Sir Guy, I know. Father. Yes? What is it, best? Who is that man sitting at that corner table? Him? Sir John Lancashire. Why, haven't you ever seen him before? He's one of the king's close associates, a very promising young man. Oh. Why, does he interest you? No, but for the moment I thought he was someone else. Oh. Well, good night, Father. I'll be home early. Good night. Have a good time. The daughter is very beautiful, landlord. She's a beautiful amount of trouble, Sir John. That's what she is. Why? Why? I'll tell you why. Uh, there's Sir Guy Barrington, ready to marry her and give her a good home, and all she can talk about is that highwayman. The highwayman? Does she know the highwayman? The Ross held up her coach tonight. He kissed her. Can you imagine that? Yes, I can. Easily. And now she fancies herself in love with him. Well, I shouldn't be standing here telling you all this. She's always saying I talk too much. I suppose I do. But it's heavy on my mind tonight. So she's in love with the highwayman. Where has she gone now? She's gone to Lady Catherine's masquerade. And since the guy's taken her up, she gets invited to all the gentry's affairs. Well, I've got to see to my guests. Uh, can I serve you anything? No, thank you, landlord. I think I must be leaving, too. He'd a French cocked hat on his forehead, and a bunch of lace at his chin, a coat of claret velvet, and breeches of brown doe skin, and they fitted with never a wrinkle. His boots were up to his thigh, and he rode with a jewel twinkle, his pistol butts a twinkle under a jewel sky. I have the pleasure of this waltz. Why, 
I have a partner. He went to get some refreshments. Then for the moment you're free. Yes, for the moment. <sighs> you're lighter than moonlight, my arm. Wasn't it rather foolish of you to come here, Sir John Lancashire? Oh, so you know my name. I know enough about you to hang you. Why do you say that? You surely didn't think I'd forget you so quickly. Or that Sir Guy would. Sir Guy doesn't worry me too much. Then perhaps you'd better worry about me, sir. If you think I'm going to stand by and let you rob my friends, you're vastly mistaken. I'm your prisoner. Call out, turn me over whenever you wish. Are you so sure I won't? No, but I am sure that if you do, it won't matter very much what happens to me. As a matter of fact, I advise you to call out, my dear. It would be very wise. Why? Because if you don't, you'll be my prisoner for the rest of your life. If I turn you over, they'll kill you. If you don't, there may be a day when you'll die with me. Because I'll never stay away from you. Not now. Well, my dear? I, I cannot do it. God help us both. I cannot do it. Uh, look here, Bess. Uh, this is my dance. I was just filling in for you, Sir Guy. Excuse me. Who is that man, Bess? I don't know. You don't know? You don't know? But you were dancing with him? Yes. What's got into you tonight, Bess? Kissing bandits, dancing with strangers? Or, or was he a stranger? Yes, he was. I'm not so sure. That fellow looked familiar to me. Sure I've seen him somewhere before. I may have seen him earlier this evening. Oh, no. The highwayman was much taller. You're sure? Very sure. Well, all right, my dear, all right, but I'm going to keep my eye on that fellow all the same. What are you doing out here by yourself? It was warm in the ballroom. Oh. I wanted a breath of air. What are you doing out here? Looking for you. It's a beautiful night, isn't it? You could almost touch the stars. Yes. This is my kingdom. Now it's yours. The world at our feet and heaven at your fingertips. This is the hour to be young and in love. That's our moon in the sky. And this is our world all about us. Bess, I have to say it. I love you. I love you this hour and will for every hour until the end of time. My darling. My darling. Oh, it, it's almost midnight. They'll be unmasking soon and you'll be leaving. Oh, take me with you. I can't. I can't take you with me. Not yet. It's too dangerous. Tell me. Why do you steal? You don't need the money. I do. But not for myself. I've never kept anything for myself. You see, there are people in this world who don't realize they have too much, just as there are people who don't realize they don't have enough, that they're dying too young and too poor. I steal for them. Those I take from can always spare it. Do you understand? Yes, I think I do. But it's wrong. I know it's wrong, and so do you. There must be more honorable ways you can help. <laughs> are you trying to reform me? I'd like to. I'd like to keep you safe. Because you see, from tonight on, my heart will be riding the highways with you. And it's pretty vulnerable. An accident to you could kill it, too. You're very, very sweet. There's something between us. I knew it this evening when you kissed me. It was like coming home. Whatever comes to one of us must come to both of us now. It's like that. Isn't it? Yes, it's like that. I wish it wasn't, but it is like that. There he is! They discovered me. So for the moment, goodbye. Be careful. Oh, be careful. Don't let him get away after him. He's heading for his horse. We'll never catch him. After him, you fools. After him. After him. just a moment, Act Two of The Highwayman, starring Victor Jory. During these February days of changeable weather, you can never tell when you'll suddenly start sniffling and sneezing. 
And if you do, let the very first sneeze be a warning. It may be nature's advance notice of an approaching head cold, and it will pay you to be careful. Head colds can cause so much suffering. Now, one of the simplest and surest ways to relieve the distress of head colds is with Vicks Vatronol, the special double-duty nose drops. Yes, a little Vatronol put in each nostril quickly brings wonderful relief, soothing the sneezy irritation and helping to clear nasal stuffiness. And the most important advantage of Vatronol is that if used promptly at the first sniffle or sneeze, it helps prevent many colds from developing. So it's really a wise thing, friends, to have a bottle of Vatronol handy, ready to use when a head cold threatens. Just follow directions in the folder. Try it. Vicks Vatronol, the special double-duty nose drops. And now, Act Two of The Highwayman, starring Victor Jory and featuring Gertrude Warner. The highwayman came riding, riding, riding. The highwayman came riding up to the old inn door. Over the cobbles he clattered and clashed in the dark inn yard, and he tapped with his whip on the shutters. But all was locked and barred. He whistled a tune to the window, and who should be waiting there but the landlord's black-eyed daughter, Bess, the landlord's daughter, pleating a dark red love knot into her long black hair. We'd better walk out by the gate down the road away. We don't want to waken Father. If he hasn't wakened now, I don't think he will. You never can tell. Oh, John, it's been so long. For three weeks, I haven't had a word from you. I've been busy. Oh? I've been making plans. I've decided to become an honest man for you. John! There's a prize I'm after tonight, just one prize, and I'm taking it, and I'm quitting. I've decided to buy a farm in the north. Will you like being a farmer's wife? I like being yours. Wonderful. All right, now, here are my plans. I'll have to be off now because I have a long way to ride. But I'll be here about noon tomorrow. And then we'll find a clergyman and become Mr. and Mrs. Farmer. And that will be the end of the highwayman. I can't believe it. Oh, darling. Oh, here now. What are you crying about? Maybe dreams do come true. Maybe there is something to fairy tale endings. Maybe the prince and princess do live happily ever after. I've been so frightened. I've had such dreams. I kept seeing you dead by the roadside. <laughs> Wasn't that foolish of me? Very. Don't you know my life is charmed? Well, then, best, just one more thing. If they press me sharply, I may not get here during the day. If you don't see me at noon, look for me by moonlight. You'll surely come. I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar the way. And now, until tomorrow, goodbye, my darling. And dark in the dark old inn yard, a stable wicket creaked where Tim, the ostler, listened. His face was white and peaked. His eyes were hollows of madness, his hair like moldy hay. But he loved the landlord's daughter, the landlord's red-lipped daughter. Dumb as a dog, he listened. And he heard the robber say, I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar the way. Well, Bess. Well, Father? So, Sir John Lancashire and the highwaymen are one and the same. Doesn't that sound a little ridiculous to you? Yes, but I know it's true. Tim the ostler heard you a while ago. He told me the whole conversation. Bess, I want you to promise that you'll never see that man again. He's bad. He's a robber. And you're a good girl and not for the likes of him. I'm going to see to it that he's put in prison. You must tell me where he hides. I don't know. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. You'll have to catch him yourself. No, you'll catch him for me. He'll come to see you, and then we'll have him. No! No, you can't make me do that. Oh, you wouldn't do that. You couldn't do that. Don't you understand how I love him? Oh, Father, listen to me. If he dies, there's nothing in the world for me anymore. My heart would always be empty. He's the blood that courses through me, and all the pain and all the joy. He's what my eyes want most to look upon and my arms want most to embrace. 
He's the difference between life and death and heaven and hell. Oh, don't you understand? If he dies, I want to die. Love isn't that important, Bess. It only seems so now when you're young. We don't really die of it. You'll have to trust me. You'll have to believe that I know what's best for you. This pain will all pass in a week or a month. There'll be someone else then. Please, please don't do this. Don't betray him. I love you, and I must. If you do, I'll despise you. I'll despise you and hate you and loathe you until I die. Good night, Miss. I'm sorry, but I'll have to lock your door. Dawning, he did not come at noon. And out of the tawny sunset before the rise of the moon, when there was a gypsy's ribbon looping the purple moor, King George's men came marching, marching, marching. King George's men came marching up to the old inn door. Oh! Are you the landlord here? Oh, him, sir. Oh, where's your daughter? She's locked in her room. Uh, take us up. Follow me, men. You men have been drinking. We have, and it's none of your concern. You'll, you'll treat her kindly, won't you? She'll be all right as long as she doesn't try to escape. All right, landlord, you can wait downstairs. I'd like to stay. We'll call you if we want you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Tie to the foot of the bed. A oh, pretty wench, isn't she? A little tear stain. Well, that's what comes of having a taste for the wrong people. Have you nothing to say? No. Well, tie her up for her death watch. Aye. You better gag her. I don't take a chance of her screaming and warning him. And you would if you had the chance, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> is she bound good and tight? Bound she is. All right. You and Keith take up your watch by that window. You'll shoot from there. All right. Well, my pretty, how about a kiss for a hard-working soldier? Huh? Don't you dare! All right, all right, all right. A little peppery for my taste, anyhow. <laughs> what about giving her a spot of brandy? No, i fixed this gag now. I'll have one myself. She really looks like she's keeping a watch all right. All she needs is a gun. Huh. That's a good idea. I'll tie a gun to her chest, and she'll really be a dangerous little girl with a gun tied to her chest. <laughs> Uh, too bad her hands won't be free to aim it. She made short work of us. Uh, there you are, lady. Now keep good watch. Now keep good watch. And I kissed her. She heard the doomed man say, Look for me by moonlight, I'll come to thee by moonlight, though hell should bar the way. She twisted her hands behind her, but all the knots held good. She writhed her hands till her fingers were wet with sweat and blood, and they stretched and strained in the darkness. The hours crawled by like years, till now, on the stroke of midnight, cold on the stroke of midnight, the tip of one finger touched it. The trigger at last was hers. The tip of one finger touched it. She strove no more for the rest. Up she stood to attention with the barrel beneath her breast. She would not risk their hearing. She would not strive again, for the road lay bare in the moonlight, blank and bare in the moonlight, and the blood in her veins in the moonlight throbbed to a love's refrain. I wonder where he is. Uh, maybe he isn't coming. Maybe someone's having a laugh at us. Well, if they are, it isn't her. Yes, we, we look pretty silly going back to London and saying we sat all night for nothing. Maybe he's got another love. Maybe he's not interested in this one anymore. Listen. Huh? Do you hear that? That's him. He's coming. Down the ribbon of moonlight over the brow of the hill, the highwayman came riding, riding, riding. The redcoats looked to the priming. Bess stood up straight and still. Her eyes grew wide for a moment. She drew one last deep breath. Then a finger moved in the moonlight. Her musket shattered the moonlight, shattered her breast in the moonlight, and warned him with her death. 
He turned, he spurred him westward. He did not know who stood bowed with a head over musket, drenched with her own red blood. Not until dawn he heard it, and slowly blanched to hear how Bess, the landlord's daughter, the landlord's black-eyed daughter, had watched for her love in the moonlight and died in the darkness there. Back he spurred like a madman, shrieking a curse to the sky, with the white robe smoking behind him, his rapier brandished high, blood red where he spurred to the golden noon, wine red with his velvet coat. When they shot him down on the highway, down like a dog on the highway, and he lay in his blood on the highway with a bunch of lace in his throat. And still, on a winter's night, they say, when the wind is in the trees and the moon is a ghostly galleon tossed upon cloudy seas, when the road is a ribbon of moonlight over the purple moor, a highwayman comes riding, riding, riding. A highwayman comes riding up to the old inn door. He whistles a tune in the windows. And who should be waiting there but the landlord's black-eyed daughter, Bess? The landlord's daughter pleading a dark red love knot into a long black hair. Good evening, Mr. Highwayman. How goes the night? Profitably? That depends. I'm asking for a kiss. Aren't you accustomed to taking what you want? But since I am asking... Since you are asking, of course you must have the kiss. In just a moment, an important message from Victor Jory. Friends, if you've ever used Vicks Vatronol to relieve the distress of a nasty head cold, you know how wonderfully effective it can be. And if you haven't, well, there's no time like now, if a stuffy head cold is making you miserable. Once you try Vatronol, once you put a few soothing drops in each nostril, you'll agree that Vatronol is really a fine medication. You'll notice how quickly it goes to work right where trouble is, to relieve the sneezy irritation and how it opens up the stuffy nasal passages in a hurry to make breathing easier. In our opinion, Vicks Vatronol is a specialized medication that is altogether in a class by itself as a reliever of the misery of head colds. And more than that, if you use Vatronol soon enough, if you use it at the first warning sniffle or sneeze, it actually helps prevent many colds from developing. So, friends, the next time you feel a stuffy head cold come on, why not use a few drops of Vatronol? Just follow the simple directions in the folder. Vicks Vatronol Nose Drops. This is Victor Jory. Last week I named three plays and asked you to tell me which ones you'd like to hear. An overwhelming majority of you favored Samuel Hopkins Adams' romantic story of two people who hitchhiked their way to happiness on a night bus from Miami, bound for New York. This story originally appeared in Cosmopolitan magazine, and one of the most delightful scenes in it is The Walls of Jericho, where a blanket made two bedrooms out of one in a small tourist cabin. So our play next week is Night Bus. For the following week, will you again help me choose between that great picture, the great McGinty, which starred Brian Donlevy. Only Yesterday, another long-remembered picture, Only Yesterday, which starred Margaret Sullivan, and that great love story, Marley. Write me care of Columbia Broadcasting, New York 22, New York. <laughs> Our script today was adapted by Gene Holloway from Alfred Noy's famous poem and was directed by Richard Sandville. Music for this series is under the direction of Mark Warnell. 
be sure to be with us next week when Vicks, the makers of Vicks Vatronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler brings you another great matinee theater production starring Victor Jory and featuring Gertrude Warner in Night Bus. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.